Tonight, a resistance is growing across our nation. After decades of silence, women are sounding off against a pervasive issue that has haunted them for generations. None of the women were eager to, to go public, and it took multiple interviews um, before they agreed to speak publicly um, because in the end they felt like they needed to do it. And despite social stigma, men are also sharing their stories of harassment. I hope that uh, everyone who's dealing with these sorts of situations does feel the courage to uh, come forward. We've seen shocking allegations cause a shakeup in Hollywood, from the White House to our own state government. One former lobbyist even claiming that the senator offered to trade sexual acts for his support. The crusade to end workplace sexual harassment began in 2017. In 2018, will we witness the revolution? Why not fight back? What else are we doing? Good evening and thank you so much for joining us. We're coming to you live from Hillsborough Community College in Ybor City. I'm Veronica Cintron, your host for tonight's Spectrum News Town Hall, Silent No More, Harassment in the Workplace. Joining us right now to begin this discussion this evening, an esteemed panel of guests. Sierra Bender is a renowned empowerment speaker and women's rights advocate. We also have attorney Jim Thompson. Thank you so much for being with us. And we have Evangeline Hawthorne with the Equal Opportunity Employment Commission. Thank you so much for being with us. At home, thank you for watching. We'll be receiving your questions via social media, so you are part of this very important dialogue. And also we have an audience joining us here at HCC tonight. I want to tell you the goal this evening. We want to have a better understanding of the issue of sexual harassment in the workplace and how it affects women and men at work. We have to talk about some numbers, though, very important as we look at this issue and really get a better understanding of the question of what constitutes sexual harassment. Also, how did we get to this point? You know, this issue has gained so much notoriety even in the last couple of months. I want to show you some numbers. You're seeing this at home as well. Take a look. Statistics that really give us a better idea of just the prevalence of this issue uh, in the workplace. These are by aware.org. They found out of 500 workers surveyed that both male and female involved in this survey across 92 companies, 79% of women reported being harassed. For men, 21% said they too experienced some type of harassment. Now, I wanna talk right now about how we got to this point. You know, 2017, many people call this a tipping point in the issue of sexual harassment, but we know this is an issue that's existed in the workplace for many, many, many years. It just gained a lot, a lot of attention because of high profile figures, whether it was Hollywood or in politics, uh, being accused. Take a look as we explore how we got here just in the last couple of months. We saw it everywhere, on our social media pages, on our television sets, on magazines, t-shirts, buttons. A single phrase sparked from a Hollywood scandal that would begin a revolution. Hashtag Me Too. They, they really f***ed with the wrong person. Actress Rose McGowan, one of the many voices speaking out. Her crusade against shamed Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein unfolded last October. She was one of 57 women accusing Weinstein of sexual misconduct. I'm five foot one, he's six foot two, he's much, much larger than me. He was blocking the only exit out. The New York Times dropped a bombshell report on Weinstein, detailing decades worth of sexual assault allegations. In the coming weeks, more powerful men would crumble under the weight of their own actions. Look at the world. Longtime trusted journalist Charlie Rose was fired from both CBS and PBS after several female co-workers accused him of lewd, inappropriate behavior. Erica Hill, former co-anchor with Charlie Rose. And it was, it was disturbing, it was disappointing, and, and it made my blood boil. NBC would then sever ties with Today Show host Matt Lauer, whose 20-year television career came to an abrupt end. He himself apologized for sexual misconduct within the workplace. In 
2017, we also witnessed the fall of notable politicians. U.S. Senator Al Franken stepped down and allegations forced Florida Senator Jack Latvala to resign. A woman meeting with Latvala on business reported the former senator grabbed her buttocks, kissed her mouth and grunted in her ear. One witness told investigators, quote, Latvala still lives in the 70s and 80s where these things were done, but the rules have changed and no one has told him that the rules have changed. And it is important to know that former Senator Jack Latvala has denied the allegations leveled against him. With that, I want to dive right into our dialogue and first get your reaction to what we've seen unfold here just in the last couple of months. First, Sierra. Wow, well, to me, being in women's empowerment, it's fabulous because it's finally coming to a head, which is, which is great that we're putting light on it. But it's been here for so long. And the sad part of it is, is that, it, again, Hollywood becomes the star of the subject matter. And for all those women and all these young girls, even rape on college campuses this has been going on for years. And why all of a sudden we're starting to pay attention? Why are we listening now? Um, so for me, it's great. But on the other side of it, it's like, um, why do there have to be so many casualties before something's done instead of doing prevention? Investing time and energy and money in prevention so that we don't keep repeating the same pattern. So there's two sides to this, you know, being in this part of this business. So. Absolutely. And Jim, as an attorney, I'm sure you're, you're staying busy and you're getting a lot of calls now about this. What's your reaction to everything that's developed up until now, just recently? Well, I think that the law hasn't really changed. Everything's the same. Uh, what's happened is I think that people are feel empowered to come forward if something happens to them. Um, I think that what used to be a reluctance and you're worried about your job, you're worried about the stigma, you're worried about everything else. Um, people, and it's not just females, just anyone who gets sexually harassed, um, has a, there's a much better tendency now to go to your supervisor, go to HR, address the um, situation, or just go to the harasser, the person who's um, doing it. The, the person may not even realize that they're harassing you. They may think that they're just flirting with you. The, key is it's whether it's a welcome type of flirting or a welcome type of action or whether it's unwelcome and now when it's unwelcome i think that a lot of people who are being harassed are less reluctant to say please stop don't do it you know it makes me uncomfortable we've seen obviously social media has fueled much of this movement for you at the eeoc evangeline tell me what's different now Okay, well, as you've already stated, I mean, this is nothing new for us. Um, certainly since Title VII, the, the, the sex discrimination statute, we've, we've been investigating these types of cases. I was really curious about your numbers because that reflects a lot of the charges, that, the complaints that we, re that we receive. Um, about 80% of the charges that we receive are from women, about 15% are from men. Um, I think that this movement is nothing short of really remarkable in that it's bringing awareness to something that's been going on probably since the beginning of time. Um, and now that uh, individuals and em employees can feel empowered uh, to actually do something, they don't have to suffer in silence, they can actually feel encouraged and uh, respected that if they complain, there's recourse. Some of the loudest voices we've heard uh, from recently, we talk about celebrities and we talk about Hollywood. If you were watching on Sunday, the Golden Globes, uh, celebrities making a fashion statement, all wearing black and also giving some uh, strong, powerful speeches about the issue of sexual harassment and how they're responding. Take a look. The stars were out this past Sunday night, but the red carpet went dark, a sea of black, a show of solidarity. This year, the 75th annual Golden Globes was all about righting the wrongs of Hollywood's rampant sexual harassment history with the war cry, time's up. For too long, women have not been heard or believed if they dared to speak their truth to the power of those men. But their time is up. Numerous actors and actresses donned pins with the phrase, time's up an initiative to end workplace injustice. We can have to be forever changed in this moment. We are more united as an industry than we have ever been, men and women. So we're just trying to change the statistics and we need the help. Commanding the stage, longtime TV host turned philanthropist, Oprah, who gave a bold speech addressing victims of sexual abuse, offering words of wisdom and the promise 
change is coming. A new day is on the horizon. And when that new day finally dawns, it will be because of a lot of magnificent women and some pretty phenomenal men fighting hard to make sure that they become the leaders who take us to the time when nobody ever has to say, me too, again. Thank you. Sarah, when I hear the words, time's up, I feel like that's something you've been saying for many years. You've been at this 30 years empowering women, speaking in colleges, talking to businesses about empowering women so they can seek justice, they feel comfortable in their own skin speaking up. In what ways has the issue of sexual harassment affected you personally? Tell me a little more about your story. Uh, well, for me, I am a statistic of sexual assault um, as a child from ages five, five to 12 by a family member. Being a statistic, you will continually become a statistic until you empower yourself. So this is great that all this empowerment is coming forth. Empowerment actually means pulling forth what's already within you. From there, it took me to a situation being in the modeling business. It's all about abuse of power. It's all about with beauty comes power and money. It's, they all go together. And I left that industry and I saw that I needed to be on the other side of it. And then I was sexually assaulted by a doctor when I was 32 years old. I was, wanted to get pregnant. Um, I had a very rare tubular pregnancy that ruptured my uterus and I bled to death. And that's what turned me around to the empowerment of what I'm doing today. So I'm, I'm blessed, but I couldn't help other women unless I actually went through it. So I know what it's like on all aspects. And being in the industry myself. So um, with the sexual assault, being sexually assaulted by a doctor, I knew what he did, but I went out of my body and I knew it was um, a violation. Um, being a survivor, I felt the shame, I felt the guilt, I didn't know what to do with this, but my righteous anger was, was, was when I came back, I said, I have to do something about this because I'm not allowing him to get away with that. I will not become a victim again. And so I marched down to the police station and put my best suit on and I said, I know what my rights are. And this is what the problem is too, is most women don't understand the law. They don't understand what their rights are. So I went down to the police department and I reported it. And they basically laughed at me and said, well, how much money would you like to sue him for as if he was worth more than me? And as I was going through the process and thank God I have a mouth, God gave me uh, mm. a mouth. and just being the person that I am, that I uh, walked away. I said, basically, I know what my rights are. I'm here to report this. I can't prove it, but it's for the next woman so that it's down on paper. And the purpose of that, as I say, to help people who've gone through this is you probably can't do something about it at this moment in this time, but you're paying it forward for another woman and you're putting him or her in a position to, to now be in the place of defense. So he has to now explain himself right. or he or she. And then that came into marching down to the medical board and also creating, a, a, I, I did a report, which then helped create the law of a third party present in a doctor's office, but it all came down to money. It was all about money. And I said, if it's about money, then to protect the the patient and to protect the doctor, the best way to do is have a third party present because right. then there's less lawsuits. And that's in one way how the empowerment for you has been taking action, taking a stand really quick, Jim. If you can talk about the difference zone, we look at sexual harassment and the different things that you hear people talking about, the difference between inappropriate behavior in the workplace, how it escalates to harassment, and sometimes in, in some cases it's assault. What's the difference? Well, I get calls with the full gamut. You know, I have some people call me where it's unwanted flirting um, and I've had calls where it's become just, you know, full sexual assault. Uh, there's different way to handle it. You know, if it's flirting, if you're somebody keeps coming on to you, you don't want them to come on to you. What you do is say, please don't do this anymore. Right. If they continue, it becomes unwanted. You know, it becomes obviously unwanted. That's and that's what problem, it crosses right. the line. Right. Uh, Jim, really quick, we do have an audience question about this. Go ahead, Lori Davidson with that audience question. Yeah, that's right, Veronica. And this actually comes from social media. Has this movement caused an increase in legal inquiries about sexual harassment? Absolutely. 
Yeah, um, we get calls all the time. Uh, my associate and I both get calls on sexual harassment. Uh, what it's done is it's made people realize that when this type of thing happens to them in the workplace, there's a recourse, there's something to do. Uh, generally speaking, what they do first is they give me a call or they give another attorney a call. What I do is I tell them, well, the first thing you need to do is report it. Go to your supervisor, go to human resources, see if they can stop the situation, put an end to it. If that doesn't happen, then I have them come into my office and we do what's called a charge of discrimination with the EEOC and the EEOC starts investigating. Um, once you go to the supervisor and once you go to the, or HR, what you're doing, it's engaging in protected activity. And once you've engaged in protected <coughs> activity, your job is protected. You can't be fired for reporting harassment or discrimination in the workplace. If you do, there's going to be a lawsuit. Right. You know, and, and that's the first thing that'll happen. And I've had quite a few cases where I've had somebody call up, what happened to them probably didn't rise to the level of sexual yeah. harassment, but because they complained and something happened to them afterwards, they end up with a retaliation case. Jim, thank you so much. We're going to get back and speak more in depth about this very issue. But coming up right after this break, in addition to this, we're going to look at sexual harassment in politics and why some leaders say the reporting process just doesn't work. That'll be right after this break. Stay with us.